Dear ones, I just had back surgery here in Dallas. I'm at a friend's house right now. Thank you for your prayers. I was less than 24 hours ago. That was under the knife. Everything went well. So I didn't have a chance to uh, do a traditional video, but I want to propose to you one that uh, is very meaningful to me and hopefully we'll do the same with you. I'll catch you next week. Ciao. The dash, the most important symbol that exists. The other night I was celebrating the 60th birthday of a dear friend of mine, and so all of a sudden people started to tell stories, but more so they started to give him praises for the kind of life that he has lived so far and the impact that he has had on different people. And the interesting thing is that it became almost like a memorial while he was still alive. My favorite movie is Gladiator. And there is one scene where the general, Maximum, he's saying to his troops right before they go to battle, what you will do on this earth will echo into eternity. Awesome phrase. One day, my friend, me, and you will have a stone with two dates written on it that are separated by a little dash. And that little dash is significant because it represents what we would have accomplished here on earth. Therefore, dear friend, I think it's critical that we evaluate where we put our energy, our time, and our resources, because that little dash has an eternal value. Have you ever asked yourself what you want to have written on that tombstone, or what you want to have written in your obituary? I don't know how many of you know the story about the Nobel Prize. Let me tell you, it's quite interesting. In 1888, Alfred Nobel, who was a chemist from Sweden, reads an interesting article on a French newspaper that talked about his death because the uh, journalist actually mistakenly wrote about Alfred being dead instead of Ludwig, his brother. And the title said, The Merchant of Death has died. And this was so disturbing to Alfred that he actually changed his lifestyle. He changed his will. He actually decided to donate 94% of his estate, which uh, today actually amounts to $500 million, to five different categories, five people that would excel in physics, in chemistry, in literature, in medicine, and in peace. So those are awarded today to people that are exemplaries in those areas every year, as you know. But the man dies eight years later at the age of 63 in his house in uh, San Remo, Italy. Having changed, though, the outcome of his obituary, Alfred was lucky enough to foresee what would have been written, actually, about his death. And he made some radical changes to his life. What we visualize in the future has a tremendous impact on our action today. To dream about the future doesn't give us anything concrete. But if we have a clear idea of where we want to go, then our mind all of a sudden starts working to make that dream an actual reality. What you're doing today, does it have a value that is a lasting value? Are you impacting positively the life of those that are around you? Or you're just surviving day after day? Coming from the world of high finance, I've seen a lot of multimillionaires that have built financial empires, and yet they were emotionally and spiritually bankrupt. So all that labor, all that work, for what end? I love how Matthew puts it in his gospel when he says, what profits a man if he gains the whole world and yet loses his soul? Just remember that you've never seen a U-Haul truck behind a hearse. So, dear friend, what will it be written on your tombstone? That is something that you can determine right now. Work on that dash. I'm continuing to pray for you. Please pray for me, and I will see you next week. Ciao.